recording on here. Okay. Tony's our uh, texturing expert and uh, one of the few in the shop that does serious texturing. So he's going to show us uh, the ins and outs of texturing. So uh, Robert Zorby puts out some tools and uh, this is this red one here is uh, uh, they call it the micro texturing s system and this particular wheel has bevels on both sides and this is basically called a texturing wheel and basically when you use it you're usually just applying it head on if you start turning it to try and do different designs it'll tear up fibers and things of that nature because the way the wheels design but what comes with the set is two other wheels and uh, these wheels here they have a bevel on them right there and this is a two millimeter wheel and uh, basically when you apply it you apply it to the bed come to the bevel to the wood and you cut with the end of the wheel just the corners of the wheel and of course if you want to go straight in and make a line of that nature you just go right in with it and you'll see some of that today so and then they also come out with a larger system this and Keep both of these systems are are the SIGs they're there for every one of you to use if you choose to use them and this particular wheel they come in two four six millimeters and then a texturing wheel in itself and this would be the texturing wheel and you might have a better view of that with as far as the bevel goes bevel on both sides the same concept you don't use this to spin and these are also spiraling tools and i'll show you some of that too how you can make a spiral spiral or knurls and things of that nature there's a lot of things you could do with this and over time i've been playing around with this now for a couple years and you just trial and error, you watch a couple videos on YouTube, this and that, and you just try a couple things. So I'll show you a couple things. We'll make a couple designs here, like if you're doing the bottom of a bowl, it's good for lids. Um, acorns, you could do a neural look around the top of an acorn if you ever made acorns on a lathe. <laughs> and uh, so there's a lot you could do with it. So. I'll just start turning something here and uh... Let me mention that the tools that are owned by the SIG, I don't think the shop has any of these, do they? No. Only the SIG. SIG. The SIG owns them. They're in locker number 68 in the drawer right over here. Right. You don't have to sign them out, but, you know, obviously please put them back. But that's the only place they are because they're not, we're trying to somewhat control them. And we're trying to do that so we can promote membership in the SIG. In other words, SIG, ha SIG has its benefits. So. And another thing, too, uh, there's a couple little things you need to know. Uh, you know, there's certain speeds, and I'll talk about it, and this and that. And I noticed on a SIGS tool, this is a bronze-type nut here that go, just screws in, and it holds the wheel, and the wheel spins freely. Well, if you go to try and take a screw out, it's harder to get out because it's worn. Somebody was using it, maybe apply, applying a lot of pressure going too fast something but the bronze the screw will wear so you got to be careful with things like that but we'll talk about maybe get some more of these screws so right now <clears throat> what I'll do is I'll put some designs on here and with, with this mini system or micro system I like to keep it at uh, your speed they say 500. If you watch a couple of videos, some will say 400, some will say 700. So let's say five, 600 RPMs. Oh, what kind of is it? It's just a waste block, maple. <laughs> I just put two of them together, that's all. So uh, what I usually do is I, I, I lay the uh, tool uh, tool rest and the height, I, I like to keep it right about center. And what, what we'll do here is, I'm going to take this tool and uh, with this bevel, and we're just going to start off with something in the middle, and then we're going to progress out with a design. 
So I'm going to go around 500, give or take. And I also got this belt on the low speed. You want the torque because you can lose a little control with the movement of these tools. We probably could see it tonight. But we're going to come on. I got, again, the bevel is here. I always put the bevel to the left side of the screw head. That way it's not in your way when you turn. So we take the bevel towards me and then we'll just go in and start touching a little pressure. One, two, three, four, five. Might have a little flower there or something. Yeah, it's not full. Wait a minute. Give me a minute. There we go. Priority. Okay, thank you for coming. <laughs> <laughs> So then, you know, you can, again, you know your choice on what you want to do, but uh, right now, I'll go straight in next to the flower, a little bit of pressure, then I'll turn it one o'clock, two o'clock, and then straight up. One o'clock, and I don't even know what I just did. But another thing, when you turn, you just want to um, burnish it a little bit. You can do it with shavings. You can do it with a brush. See what we got. Just. A simple design there. And then if you wanted, what helps with these with the texturing, and I hope I see this right. Sometimes I'll take a pencil for what I'm doing now, but now I'm just gonna put a little border around things. Is that a point tool? Yeah, I use a point tool for that. And it sort of gives it a little pop. Yeah. I'm not seeing it, are you seeing it in the audience? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I, I can't. Okay. And then you could use color. And that'll also give it pop. But you know, you can make a design, you can color it up, and you can put a finish on it, or you can just leave it natural. So that's one thing we could do. Then if you don't like it, This is the downside. I should probably change the belt for this. Do that. The reason I'm changing the belt because I can't keep on trimming this off. But I, you know, texturing on that low speed is a good thing. like an eraser. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so 
So now I'll just show you something with the larger tool. And of course you need a little room. Usually three fingers or so. But you know, you, you want to uh, always come in on a little bit of an angle. Again, there's the part that's going to be cutting just on the outside. So we'll put another design on here. Now this is the kind of movements where maybe the tool can run away from you. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and then I'm going to ride it out and turn, turn the tool as well. So we'll come in, we'll get a little cut going. And then... do that for huh. a design. I mean, it's not really a big deal. But you can make these designs and incorporate it, you know, with other other designs, but just to show you some of the things that it do. don't like that one. So now we'll just play again with the designs. And with this bigger tool, you can go up to a thousand, they say. You just sort of get a feel for what, what's comfortable with you. Because again, like when I was turning it before, it wanted to run with that. So we'll just come in, a little bit of pressure, go straight in. One o'clock. Just another design. And if you burnish, it'll look a little better. You can't do it with our, <laughs> you can't go in reverse. On, in number the one, you'd be putting pressure on this and you'd be wanting to unthread it. Yeah. We don't ever turn in reverse. Right. We don't have the right but, equipment. But you see how, I mean, here, it's still a little fuzzy and everything, and I'm a little awkward with the camera right here, but you know, you, you'll oh, learn yeah, your, pre your, yeah. your, your <laughs> pressure that you apply, you know, that like a depth of cut, you can only go so far. But uh, you can see here, can you, do you see that on the screen? Yeah. Like here, here's like a tight little thing, it was just straight on here. Instead of a little flower, you know, it looks like a little sunburst. It's yeah, just that's all just rotating the tool, right? Right. Yeah. Right, and uh, different um, teeth width: two millimeter, four millimeter. Like this, that was a four millimeter tool I was working with. It's kind of big for this, but just to show you the tool. And then another thing, too, with the tools, and this is a SIGS tool too. These put little embellishments in, in the wood. Yeah. 
it's just a little ball, one square, and they, you, you know, that they, you just put them to the side. I'll show you in a minute. Put that in there, and it just drops in this holder, and it'll get warm. But basically, you could use it on a flat surface, but it works best if you had a cove of some sort. Right. How much pressure do you apply? Is it dependent on the wood? Yeah, definitely. Uh, the, you want the harder the wood, the tighter the grain, the better. But uh, and you 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 have to apply a little bit of pressure. This is a coving tool I bought. Just a small tool. It's like a scraper. But you can get a cove in there. Now, depending on the size of your tool, and you can use Dremels, too, if they fit. So you want to come in here like that. You want to be on center. Now, this will leave a fine line. And it will get hot if you use it a lot. Right now I'm around 600. And I'll just come in. Just one, two, three, four, five. And then it just gives you some... Some lines there. And now it won't come out. So there's no way of looking at the tool and determining what you're going to get. Just by experience, though. <laughs> yeah. A little bit of experience. I suggest, if you're interested in this, you watch a couple of videos, Robert Zorby and uh, te Texturing, and, you know, they'll show, show you the same thing I'm trying to show you. But you can incorporate this on bowls, too, and not just the bottom. You can do the whole outside and the inside and... Uh, Robert Zorby, their videos show you that, and, and it makes it look nice with a little bit of uh, color, if you choose to use some color and things like that. So, but that's what these tools, this tool is for, and you got two different size balls there, and that's what it does. But, and if you wanted, uh, like if, if you're out here on the side, which I do with pepper mills, I'll come in this way, and then I might go over it that way, create an X. Again, just different things you could do with this. So, we can get back to this. I want to show you spiraling. Clean it? You just clean it for the occasion? No. <laughs> I clean it when I'm done using it. Really? <laughs> yes. So here I just took one of them spindle blanks the shop has and I just rough rounded it. Now it's pretty round for what I'm going to show you. It'll be big enough to see. <laughs> Alright. Put the tail stock on. 
just for GPs. I didn't bring over a life center. Life center. I'm gonna grab a life center. All right, now what we're going to do now, we're going to cut some spirals. And the way we do that, and I didn't talk about this, but we're going to talk about it now. Along with this kit, some people call this a cradle, some call it a sa uh, saddle. We're going to take the um, cut cutter off and we're going to insert the tool in this saddle. Now here's another thing that's not right, but again, it's our tools. But normally this comes with three washers, and two go on one side, and one will go on the other, and I'll show you where. But we lost one of the washers, so I grabbed something that was like twice the size as one of them washers. So, to compensate. Can you see that? Yep. All right, so what we'll do now, the first thing we'll do is we'll get the saddle on. Now, on this tool, it's etched right here. There's a straight line going down the center of the tool. We want to put the saddle on here, and then it's got numbers. And these numbers are just markings where you take that etching, and you could set it left or right to a certain center. To a certain see, angle. I'm not seeing the etching. Where's the etching? Just hold still for a minute. Just bring it here. Oh, I, can you see it? Wait a minute. No, I can't. I've been under the light. Did that help you? See the etching right here? There it is. Okay, and then the, there's numbers on the saddle. You got you get that, right? Yeah, I got the numbers. Yeah. Alright, so I'm going to go to number one, and I've never been any higher than two. And then you, there's two Allens here. You just tighten it up. And I keep my saddle close. I might even have to move it. But you can see the etching. I don't know if you see the etching, but it's on number one. Mm -hmm. Uh, so now we get the tool. Now in this particular case, before I told you, uh, when the screw goes in, you want the uh, flat side to the screw head. But now it's the opposite. We're going to put the bevel up to the screw head. But you always want the heavy washer on top, the small wash, the thin washer on the bottom. And this gets a little encumbersome because you got to line all three of these up, but it's doable. What if you have it the other way? What if you have the washers flipped? I don't know. It's a it, it it's a bushing, and I think there's a bushing in here. Well, there is. There's a bearing. There's a bearing. Right. Yeah. So I really don't know. All I know is this is what I see on the videos. They don't even really talk about it. So we got the saddle on, and then we're just going to tighten up. This is a four millimeter wheel, spiraling. 
and we're set on number one. Next thing you want to do, you come over to your work. You need it a distance away. You see how the saddle's going to ride on the um, tool rest. And I'm going to be working the tool like this. What you want, you want this tool right now, you want it the saddle the way I do it. I like the saddle close to center. And I may be just a tad high. And the reason I line it up with the saddle is because when, as I start cutting, I'm going to come down and then I'll be at my center point. So what we're going to do now, we're going to get it going to about 600. I'm going to, uh, this might be a little out of round because I'm remounted it. So it's, I'm, I'm on 740. Right now what I want to do is I'm just going to come in here and I want to score some lines. So I'm going to come up, come down a little, and push. Not real hard, I'm just holding it there. So you see these lines now? Can you see them? Okay. So now, now I got a track. Th this thing will, will find itself again. So we're going to find it and I'm going to come down about a third of the way. So I'm just real light letting the tool find it. There it is. I can feel it. And I'm just back and forth. Just wiggling it and going to my left. got a little spiral sweet like you know you can incorporate this on if you were doing a clock with uh, columns of some sort or anything a handle uh, a goblet if you wanted a little area of your goblet so and this can maybe even go a little further you know you want the shape of the tooth that's what you're going to shoot for I'm going to go over it one more time Have been a little bumpy. No, it's chipping out. So again, you know, the harder the wood, the better. The softer the wood, the bigger your teeth you're going to want. Like if you're doing poplar, you might want to use this side or even one size up, like a six millimeter. So now we'll turn the saddle. We'll go to the other side. So Sorry. This? Well, it's spinning away from you, but yeah, it could hit you, but it's that's, just the way I'm holding wood, it. That's wood turning. <laughs> right. And it's Tony, so, you right. know. What's a, what, are, what are we risking, you know? Think about it. Right. <laughs> if you look at my thumbs, they're both different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little different. <laughs> wow. All right. So now I just rotated it to the opposite direction, and I'm going to start out here and go in, and then I'm going to cross. 
So again, we'll just get a line set. Probably could even go a little faster. Now I'm crossing over. Now what we should have where I cross is a neural look. And I, I, I chose a big one to give you a better visual, but uh, you know if you took used a real tight two miller we two millimeter cutter, you know, you you get this knurling look that you have with the uh, tool. So, you know, you can spiral and this isn't finished either. I mean I can go deeper. Because if you look at the tool and you look at the cuts, you see the tool is a U-shape in between the teeth, and we're not there yet, so we can even go deeper. And that's how you might have to do it. You might have to make a couple passes. Or stay in one area for a while. That started getting better. But anyhow, that's the spiraling. You can do the knurling. You can do this on the face. And we could do that too. You wanna look at that? Yeah. Getting hot. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, is there anything else you wanna see here? Any questions just about the spiraling? Did you sand the mill on these? Good, good point. When I'm texturing, I do all my sanding and everything first. I don't use triple E either, but I sand everything down. I do, and then I, I may use a sealing, sanding sealer with, with steel wool to get it off and hopefully get in some little grooves or two light coats of sanding sealer. And then I, you know, lacquer, spray lacquer. And, Right, but you don't want to sand it because you'll be taking away yeah. the so look. When do you put the sanding sealer on? Before the... After I sand, yeah. Before sand. I even texture. Before okay. I texture. Okay. Yeah. I'll use sanding sealer. I like sanding sealer because it tends to preserve the color of the wood and it helps give you a smoother finish. So. Right, what about if it's a bigger diameter? 